All right. So this is part three of the fall 2022 exam three. And I have an audience of one. She can speak up if she would like to ask questions, and that's just fine. But we're, what we're going to do is we're going to go through this question here. And the question is, the following information is for Hulk Jim's first year of operations. Amounts are in millions. Uh, the enacted tax rate is 30% for the current year and for the foreseeable future. And we have, we see that this company has only one timing difference or temporary difference, because they were referred to as timing sometimes, temporary difference, where they recorded, they, they received a 12 million of rent in advance and the Internal Revenue Code says you got to pay tax on that because you got it and uh, there's no question about the, uh, about that. And that will flip around over the next four years because it's a four-year lease. Um, in number one, which we did in class, we're going to record the journal entry for this. And, the, and we're doing this at the end of the year. That is uh, December, I'll put down 12-31, year two. And we're going to have it... Um, the first thing we're going to do is figure out the income tax payable. And how much are we going to have to pay with a tax return? And that is the taxable income, 72, times the tax rate of 30%. And that is going to give us, and this is going to be our credit. So, um, hey Siri. What is 72 times 0 0.3? 72 times 21.6. 21.6 is a credit. And um, we're going to get this future benefit from prepaying this tax, 12 million uh, at times 30%. We're going to have a deferred tax asset of 12 times 30 percent and that's going to be 3 times 12 is 3.6 and then the income tax expense is the plug and that's going to be for 18 million and you can, as um, somebody in class pointed out, you can also get that in most cases by multiplying the 60 million times 0.3, the, the accounting income. Of, but I advise you not to do it because that is not the way that um, GAAP reads. They want you to use the balance sheet approach. Does that make sense? Okay. So now we're going to go down to the next one. Oops. And it says that assume that in year three, accounting income is 80 million and taxable income is 77 million, with the reversal of the unearned rent being the only difference in book and taxable income. So this prepaid tax, the prepaid tax related to this. Um, 12 billion, we used some of that. It's just like prepaid rent being used up. And so now it's 1231 year three. And once again, we're going to start with multiplying the taxable income. Um, and that's going to be income tax payable. In, it says that the taxable income is 77 million, 77 times 30 percent. Hey Siri, what is 77 times 0 0.3? 77 times 0.3 is 23.1. 23.1. And we're going to use some of this deferred tax asset up. Oops, that should have been a, right there like that. We're going to use some of that up, and that's going to be a credit 
to the deferred tax asset or DTA tax asset and that's three times 0.3 the tax rate of 30 percent and that's going to be a reduction in like that of 0.9 And then we just make the debits equal credits, income tax expense. And that's going to be for 24.0 million. With me? Okay. So now, in number two, it says assume the same basic facts above, except at the end of year two, management expects that it is probable, more likely than not, that the firm will generate only six million of future taxable income. Prepare the journal entries needed to record the income tax expense for year two. So the only difference is that now we have this uncertainty about whether we're going to be able to use the valuation allowance. So what I'm going to do and what I would recommend that you do is just take this journal entry that we recorded before and we're going to paste it down here. And that's all remains the same. The only thing that we are really worried about now is, well, 6 million of the 12 million that deferred tax asset is based upon. So that we, we paid this um, and we, ex we need 6 million we need 12 million to take advantage of all of that deferred tax asset. But we think it's only probable that we're going to get 6 million of it. So the other six, we need to establish a valuation allowance for, which we're not, we're not, we're not expecting it. We're not more likely than not expecting that to be produced. And so we need, also on the same day, 12-31, year two, seems to be in a different font now, but that's okay. This time we're going to have a, a credit to deferred tax asset valuation allowance, long name, and that's going to be for, let me put it down in the explanation line, that's going to be for six million that we don't expect to get because the total, the total value, the, the total deferred tax asset is built on 12 million of, of um, income that we reported early but six million we don't think we're gonna get. So we're gonna take six million times 0.3 that we don't think we're gonna get. That's gonna be 1.8 million. And that's gonna be income tax expense. I think there was one more, wasn't there? Okay. Assume the, ba the basic facts above, except that at the end of year two, Congress has enacted a 20% corporate tax rate that becomes effective, uh, that should be on year, year three. That should be year three, January 1st of year three. And is expected to remain at 20% until at least the end of year six. Prepare the journal entries needed to record the income tax expense for the year, for, for year two. And for this one, again, I'm going to copy this basic journal entry here that we did from up above and paste it in here. And the only thing that's different here is that we need to, we're going to have to pay the income tax today at 30%, but the deferred tax asset is, 
is at 20% because we're expecting it to provide benefit at, at, in the future years. And so the asset is going to be, instead of 3.6, it's going to be 12 times 0.2 or 2.4. And that's going to give us um, the income tax payable. And what we're going to do is, again, we always back into the income tax expense. And we get 19.2, I believe, as income tax expense. It's a little higher because the deferred tax asset is worth less. Okay? And that's all we have for that one.